Good morning. Rise and shine. <sighs> Give God the glory, right? Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. No, we will rejoice and be glad in today. What a great day. Today is Friday. I'm coming to you live from Arroyo Grande, California, which is just down from Pismo Beach. And uh, it's a great place to live. I raised my children here uh, in this area, uh, mainly Arroyo Grande. And uh, they're uh, all grown up now. Um, I had some special time last night with a couple of them, my oldest and my youngest. Uh, Justin and I decided to have dinner together last night. And uh, gosh darn it, they, they um, uh, it's Santa Barbara County. And they, they closed down the, oh, actually, I take that back. Napomo is not Santa Barbara County. Uh, it's San Luis, where, the county where I live. But um, they closed down the restaurant dining rooms. Again, so um, my son Justin and I, I just grabbed some food and went to his place. So it was fun. I hung out with uh, Justin my oldest, uh, Justin Mikey Morrow, <laughs> named after my father, and um, Abigail. Uh, and that's good morning, Mary. It's great to have you here this morning. Welcome. Um, and my daughter, Abigail, is the youngest. Um, they don't, especially Abigail doesn't like me talking about her too much, but uh, I just want to mention that my daughter, Jessica, and I, uh, we named Abigail when Jessica was about five I think she was about four and a half, five years old. We were watching The Sound of Music and and Jessica, Jessica said, Mother, what are we gonna name our baby? <laughs> and it was super sweet. And and I thought, well, I don't, I don't know, Jessica. You know, I really just don't know yet. And it was getting to be close to the time. Okay, it was in 1999. Oh. Abigail is 20 now and uh, Jessica and I thought, what are we going to name the baby? So we were watching Abby and, or we were watching The Sound of Music, rather. And it was about the time that Maria was uh, leaving the Von, Trom Von Tramp, how do you say? Gosh, I can't even say Von Trapp family. <laughs> it's too early. All right. Yeah. Uh, he was, she was leaving the Von Trapp family because she felt like she just needed to go back to the Abbey. So, so Jessica said, ah, oh, let's name the baby Abby, <gasps> Abigail, like, like David's wife in the Bible. And I said, yes, yes, I really like that name. Let's name her Abigail. So her name, uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter is, her name is Abigail. And, um, I've called her a couple different things over the years. <laughs> Good names like Abigaila with an A at the end. And uh, anyways, uh, last night when I went to have dinner with my son Justin, we, um, uh, Abigail and her, her boyfriend, uh, Teddy, we all sat down and played Yahtzee with our own, our own little uh, dice. And uh, we had such a good time. Uh, Abigail was playing 50s, 60s, and 70s music, so uh, she knows how to she knows how to minister to her mother. Amen. That was a nice time. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you so much for being here this morning. God loves you, and I love you, and that's why I'm here, uh, bringing this message Monday through Friday at 4:44 a.m. I have a heart for people. I. I care for people. That's really what I do for a living. I assist people. And uh, it is my greatest passion in life is to care for others. And like I, like I uh, did as a mother. And um, so I want to address really, really briefly, um, I want to address the uh, situation uh, yesterday. If uh, some of you would may have noticed that... I posted, um, I posted something yesterday that um, I'm not ashamed of. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I am not regretting it. Um, but I do want to convey the message that I have a heart for people. I, I do care about people and everyone. And um, while I felt violated yesterday when 
about a few seconds after my uh, morning message, and it was with my good friend, Michelle Harris. After that morning message, I um, received um, a message in Messenger, and um, it was it, it was not a kind message. Let's just put it that way. And uh, I called the, the person that sent me the message, I called him out on it because he, he actually made a reference to uh, my morning message. And so, anyways, I called him out. But what I want to say is, um, is um, I have a heart for everyone. And I have a heart for that person. His name is Ricky. And I just want to pray, Lord, that you would grab a hold of him and uh, you would release him and and um, that you would just take him captive Father God that you would help burn the dross away from him and that you would divinely remove the desire for any kind of those, those kind of things just remove the desire that he wouldn't even know what hit him in Jesus name um, that you would just uh, minister to him this morning and and that is my heart so for those of you who saw the, the post yesterday my heart is for Ricky and I want to see him uh, released from the hold that um, <laughs> that kind of thing has on him and and uh, I pray a boldness in Jesus Christ for Ricky good morning Matt and Parker is here this morning good morning guys it's good to have you here let me grab some Sipping my coffee. Oh. Let's pray. Father God, Jesus, you are our Jehovah Rapha. You are healer. You heal hearts, Lord. You, you heal physical bodies. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Everything we have is thanks to you, God. We give you glory and honor and praise. We exalt you. We worship you. Lord, you are beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you that we have the breath to praise you this morning. Thank you that you can be our focus today and every day. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you to come in and, and be with us, each one of us. We invite you in. We say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for your presence here, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. I pray that you would place the blood of the Lamb shield of protection around each and every one of us, around Parker, around Matt, around Mary. Let nothing but your love penetrate that blood of the Lamb shield of protection in the name of Jesus Christ. Place on us the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt buckle of truth, shot our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace of Jesus Christ. Place in our hand the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, sharper than any double-edged sword place in our other hand the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, Lord, thy kingdom come. Fill your people Fill us up this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you. You are gracious, God. You are so gracious and merciful. Mm. Well, we may be undeserving of it, you graciously love on us, Father, and we thank you so much for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's, uh, let's make this declaration of uh, Psalm 91 over us all. Okay, I'm going to read Psalm 91. This never gets old or stale, right? Because uh, I pray, God, Jesus, that you would give us new revelation over 91 today. Uh, speak to that person or those persons that that need to hear a, a divine new message through your word. 
you have that kind of power. Amen? God, you are good. The Holy Spirit has that kind of power. He gives new revelation every time we read his word. God is the word. John 1. John 1. Read John 1 today because God is the word. He who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. What is the reason for my joy? Guys, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and He gives me a new a new day every day. He fills me up new. Before I come here and, and to, to pray with you and declare God's promises and read the word, wash you in the water of the word, just before that, I'm praying in the spirit, my personal language with God. I'm, I'm praying to him. I'm, I'm, I'm just ushering him in here and, and I'm asking him, Father, what, what do you want me to say? to everyone this morning. How do you want me to approach uh, this new day? Cammie, my friend Cammie is here. Cammie, oh man, I was thinking about you last night. I was praying for you. You you are a dear friend. You, you really, um, this is really a time for you, isn't it? We're gonna take the time out right now uh, to pray for my friend Cammie. Uh, they're holding a memorial for her son Emilio who passed and went to heaven to be with Jesus on March 9th and uh, Father God move like move like you have never moved before in and through Cami and through the speakers at the memorial for Emilio Lord we know how much you love him and adore him Emilio. We know, Lord, that he is with you, and he is He is in the place, Lord, of heaven where there is no pain, there is no shame, there is no sorrow, there is no sickness, and we thank you for that, Father. We sure miss Emilio. We miss his heart. We miss his heart for people. We miss his heart for his mother. His mother misses him. God, we don't really know. We talked um, two days ago about your ways are not our ways. That's that's in Isaiah 55, uh, verse 8, I believe. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are above our ways, Lord. We, we have no re reason to even pretend to know why you called Emilio home, but you did. And Father, 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 wrap Cammie up in your ribbon of love this morning. Love on her through this message. Show her your love. Whisper in her ear how much you love her. Thank you, Lord. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Good morning, JP. We're reading in Psalm 91. Uh, 91, 3 at the moment. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. If you've just joined us, welcome. Uh, you, if you're out in the public and you are not friends with me on Facebook, I, I can't see you enter the room, but I welcome you to this virtual prayer room. I welcome you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, God's got a special message for you. Uh, this is Psalm 91, and we are on uh, 7, verse 7 now. I'm going to go ahead and continue to read. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, 
lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Good morning, Omar. It's good to have you here this morning. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Mm, amen. Amen to Omar says good morning and strong protection. That's right. That's right. This is the sword of the spirit, the word of God, sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts through bone and marrow, guys. This this word of God will be your greatest protection and your greatest weapon uh, in these turbulent times. You know, I was listening to a prophetic word by a pastor in Hawaii last night, and um, it was it was interesting. It was eye opening. Let me tell you that. Um, he said that that uh, the technology described in the Bible is what we have now. Did you hear that? This is revelation that um, comes from a pastor in Hawaii. Hawaii or Hawaii. <laughs> how do you say it? Cammie knows how to say it the right way. Amen. The technology in the Bible, guys, is the technology that we have now. Technology has been rapidly advancing for years. Um, I, I, I think for me, it's been since 1991. Uh, 1991, it might have been 92, when I first heard of the World Wide Web. My friend Len Daniel, if you're watching this morning, you're, uh, you go by Zaz now. Um, but my friend uh, Len, actually, Len Daniel, he called me up and he said, he said, look, um, I want to let you in on something really big. There's this thing. It's called the World Wide Web. It's part of the internet. And um, we're going to we're gonna uh, reach millions of people through, through the World Wide Web and so forth. So he came to me with that. And, you know, technology... Um, really it seems like it really revved up after the after the world wide web doesn't it i mean it it, it went up and it really um accelerated uh technology i don't know what can i say <laughs> um so we've been watching uh technology rapidly advance and i listened to a word a prophetic word from a pastor last night um and i was i was pretty surprised it was new revelation for me that the technology in the bible is what we have now so what does that tell you? Um, this is what it tells me, guys. Jesus had to reject sin. Right? To be obedient to God, he had to reject sin. And guess what? So do we. <laughs> You could view it a different way. Jesus had to reject sin to get to his final destination to be with God the Father at his right hand in heaven. We, we have to reject sin to have a closer relationship with God. Guys, we're in turbulent times. This is a spiritual battle between good and evil. Uh, God is the good guy in the, in the big scheme of things. God is the good guy and Satan is the bad guy. And uh, I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I long to align myself with the good guy. Amen. Can I get an amen out there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's um, my kids grew up in a house my son Justin reminded me last night. I said to him, I said, you know, Justin, I, I really missed out on the 90s music. Um, or not. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't say that in a mean way or anything. Uh, I say that in a kind way. 
um, I really missed out, um, especially in the 90s music, because I was saved in 92. My kids grew, grew up going to Spirit, uh, Spirit West Coast in Monterey County, okay, at uh, Laguna Seca race, Racetrack. Um, that's where they spent their summers. They, um, we would go to, to uh, Spirit West Coast. It was a Christian music festival, and they experienced... Um, baptisms and all kinds of amazing, amazing things at Spirit West Coast. And my son Justin reminded me of that. And it reminded me of a couple couple things. Um, it reminded me how prayer has always been a way of life for me. I've always prayed uh, like, <laughs> like uh, my daddy was in the room with me. I, I've always prayed with them and, and that was a, that was a way of life. It wasn't Guys, it wasn't about going to church. It wasn't just about that, even though I did that. I was part of the worship team, and uh, I was part of teaching children the Bible. Hey, guys, that's how I got to know the Bible so well. Um, not just by reading through the Bible many times, but teaching it to children, uh, which reminds me, that's a great way for you to learn stories of the Bible. If you would uh, tune into YouTube, and search out videos uh, for for um, kids. It's fun. It's animated, and it's a fun way to learn about the stories of the Bible, get you more acquainted with God's Word. For those of you who are real visual, that's real helpful, right? But prayer and worship and uh, journaling, those things were um, always a big part of our family. And so I want to say to you that train a child up in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. it the word actually says he train a child up in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. My son, Justin, reminded me of, yeah, mom, my friends always wanted to know if I'd heard the new, the new tune, you know, this was in the 90s when my, my son's and a daughter grew up, uh, not Abigail, Abigail's younger, but <laughs> Justin reminded me that uh, I kept him from the, from the secular music in the 90s, and um, you know, I have no regrets about that. We, we listened um, to all Christian music, and, and I think that uh, it's impacted their lives, because um, yeah, it really has. It's impacted their life. Uh, one time we had a supernatural experience. Oh, oh, I suppose we had more than one. Uh, but this one time in particular, my son Alex, who is my second born, he is 29 years old now. He has uh, two children, my, my two first grandchildren, who are both having birthdays this month, by the way. Adam is now walking. I missed it. I missed the first, you know, walk around, but um, praise the Lord, I'll, I'll get with them on Wednesday. Um, but anyways, um, oh man, I lost my train of thought. Holy Spirit, won't you remind me of where I was at in talking about the kids? I got so excited. I bunny trailed. Uh, I digressed. <laughs> That's how some people say it. I digressed and um, went off in a different direction. I simply forgot where I was at. But anyways, okay. Um, the kids are awesome and... I was talking about the supernatural. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you're faithful. Okay, so right on the street that I currently live on, I was driving my son to school and the girls were in the back seat. Abigail was in her car seat and Jessica beside her. And uh, we were driving along and suddenly, as we were in the right lane, all of a sudden there were two lanes and a car came out of a driveway from, from our right. And it came out in our car we felt it. Alex looked at me in shock. He was he was like in utter disbelief. He was he just looked at me like, "What just happened?" Our car literally lifted up and went into the next lane. Supernatural. It did. It it literally just and it was very quick. It wasn't like we felt oh our car levitated. It wasn't anything like that. It was a supernatural, divine uh, intervention by God, and and our car was just moved over into the next lane. Um, by supernatural like angels i believe angels like just lifted up lifted a car up but my son my son uh was uh, witnessed that supernatural experience right before he went to school about seven o'clock in the morning and uh he he um 
he didn't talk about that for some time, but he brought it up later. Um, gosh, it must have been a few weeks later. My son just, or um, Alex, brought it up about how uh, that supernatural experience had happened, and it was, it was fun talking with him about that. And and um, yeah, it was just uh, a way that God showed Himself in all of His glory. Father, thank you so much. How you do that? How you do that, Lord? You show yourself, and mm, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Father. Thank you for your word and your protection this morning, Father. Let's gird up in the in the uh, armor of God. Good morning, Larry and Ronald Alexander. It's good to have you here this morning. Thank you. What a nice greeting this morning. Thank you so much. Kind of you. Uh, Lord, you are so good and so faithful, and you keep bringing these listeners. They're, they're flooding in this morning. It's a good Friday. It's a great day today, and uh, we're about to get, gird you up in the armor of God. So, Lord, place on us the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt buckle of truth. Shot our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace of Jesus Christ. Place in our hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, sharper than any double-edged sword. Place in our other hand the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is thy kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the glory, glory, Lord, forever. Ah, thy kingdom come. Lord, Take us captive, Lord, that your kingdom come in each one of us this morning, that we would be kingdom-minded people. We would be having an eternal perspective and not, not focused on our current circumstances. Guys, it looks bleak out there. It looks beyond bleak. Okay, um, you know, we're being, we're being uh, shut down again and... Um, and I want to say that the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, is sharper than any double-edged sword. You are going to need to love on God and love on His Word. This is the time. Uh, guys, I want you to, to purchase a Bible. You, you really, really need to have a Bible. Check out your local thrift store if they haven't closed yet. Look at uh, thrift, thriftbooks.com. How about um, Amazon? If you're still shopping on Amazon, looks like they're still delivering in two days. God, God, talk to your people this morning. Talk to your people. Look, I just glanced down in Psalm 93. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Think about how great the tide is. Think about how great those waves are that the surfers catch in the morning. Think about, think about it. Think about the greatness of the ocean and the tide and how it keeps time perfectly every day. Great is the Lord. The Lord is, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thank you, Lord, that you are mighty. You are, you are bigger than our troubles. You are bigger than our current circumstances. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to have an eternal perspective today. We desire more of you. We desire more of you, Lord, more of you and less of us. We want to be more like you. We want to be whole in you, Jesus. That's what we desire. This is my desire. This is my desire. This is our desire. Mm. That reminds me of the Jeremy Camp song. If you're listening this morning, Jeremy, which you aren't. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Uh, Jeremy Camp wrote a song. This is my desire. This is my, my, um, what is, how's it go? This is my desire. Mm. This is my return. This is my desire to be used by you. 
This is my desire. Mm. This is my return. This is my desire to be used by you. Lord, this is our desire to be used by you. You're preparing us. You're amassing an army today of people who have the heart for you, who love you, who are God chasers. We're chasing after you. We're chasing after you. We're just running and running and running into our destiny. We're longing for you to amass this army and make us a part of it. We desire to to be used by you, God. And that's why we're here and we're gathered together corporately to pray to you, God. Oh, God, it's all I can do to prevent myself from praying in the spirit. Mm. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence here, Father God. Mm. You are a good God. You are a very good God. Jan, my uh, polka king friend, is here from Florida. He just came in. Good morning and welcome, Jan. It's always a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Uh, I was longing to get to Florida in December. Uh, my father's there, as you know. Um, so let's just keep that in our prayers that I um, going to get there to see my mom and dad, my mommy, <laughs> my stepmom and my dad. My stepmom mother has been in my life for 41 years. This, I mean, this might be going on 42 years jewel and uh, my daughter my my first daughter jessica was named after jewel her name is jessica jewel um <laughs> good morning thank you jan so much and good morning to you and happy friday wow it's a happy day i bet you're gonna have a nice sunshiny day in florida we have some june gloom gloom hanging around still Good morning, Steve. It's good to have you here live this morning. Wow. Welcome. Yeah, I was just saying how um, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> All my favorites are coming in this morning. Welcome. It's good to have you here. Um, Lord, I pray you would remind me where I was at uh, in conversation. Where where was I? Where was I at? Holy Spirit, what was I talking about? Hmm. Yeah. We really long to to be used by you, oh God, and that's why we're here this morning. That's why we're focusing in on you, and uh, we're letting the world fade away. We're letting it fade away in the background so that we can focus in on you this morning. We desire you, Lord. We desire more of you. And we just invite you in, Father. And invite you in this morning and uh, teach us, teach us through your word, inspire us. Uh, that's another reason why I'm here, to inspire the fire. There's a fire burning, there's a fire burning, right, in the, in the hearts of the remnant. The remnant, I mean the remnant by those people who are chasing after God today, who long to be in his presence, who can't do life without him. Rebecca. Good morning, Rebecca. Another biblical name. It's good to have you here this morning, Rebecca. That's a beautiful name. Father, your presence. This is all about you. We love you. We worship you. We desire more of you. We be desire to be more like you, oh God. Yeah. We say, yay, God. You are a good God. You are a good God. Let's go to proverb. Uh, what's the date today? Is it the third? Gosh, I'm, I think it's the third today. Let's go um, to the next to the next book in the Bible after Proverbs. So if you've got your your Bible and you're following along, uh, if you're new to it, you're not that familiar with reading the Word. We are going to Proverbs and we're going to go to number three um, to say what. See what does number three say? I didn't. I didn't do my my due diligence last night to check out what verses, uh, what the verses say, because I had some wonderful quality time with the kids. My oldest and my youngest, we played Yahtzee with our own dice, each one of us, and that was so much fun. We had a good time, and we reminisced uh, about 
when the kids were growing up and how how mom uh, mom didn't play any of the music of the current days. So guys, they grew up with Christian music and uh, my son Justin uh, last night mentioned at, during Yahtzee, he says, he said, Justin Mikey, <laughs> named after my father, Justin Mikey Morrow. He was so cute. Uh, he's the oldest, he's 30. And he said to me, uh, he said to me, yeah, mom, uh, the kids would say, hey, did you hear that new song? And he's like, no, actually, uh, we listen to um, Christian music. <laughs> so all the time they were growing up, we listened to Christian music and uh, they spent the majority of their summers at Spirit West Coast. Amen. They were, uh, they were exposed to some pretty radical stuff anyways there. Uh, <laughs> all, all uh, Christ-centered and uh, baptisms. My, my kids rededicated their life uh, there when they were um, in their teens, and they had some great times, and no regrets. My, my son, Justin, was, you know, uh, proud. Last night when we were talking, he was, he was proud that, hey, my mom, my mom uh, took us to Spirit West Coast, and we listened to Christian music all the while we were growing up, and you know what the word says, if you don't, if you're not familiar with it in Proverbs, the Lord says that train a child up in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that is so true. That is so true. Even if you have a prodigal son, a son who has decided that uh, he doesn't need God and he's, he's gone his, on his own path. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord, that that son will return to you. And uh, thank you for the word instilled within his heart. Yeah, uh, we prayed and uh, supernatural happened in our house. And uh, that was just a way of life. We didn't just go to church. And it wasn't just about mom being in, uh, on the worship team and singing over the people. It, uh, it was about my receiving a, the gift of healing and singing a song of healing over, over people and... Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> it was about healing, uh, the natural healing of Jesus Christ, of the Lord God in our lives. And uh, that's how my children grew up. And uh, I, I thank you uh, to my son, Justin, who reminded me that, of that last night as we were playing Yahtzee together with my youngest daughter and her boyfriend, Teddy. Uh, Alan, good morning, Alan. It's good to have you here this morning. Welcome. Yeah, so I was just saying that uh, uh, my kids were my my kids were actually happy last night that I raised them up the way I did. So, amen. Mm. Yeah, so I had uh, two of them in my presence last night, and that was just glorious. And we just had a great time. We did a lot of laughing, and Abigail played '50s, '60s, '70s music. <laughs> it was super fun. She knows how to minister to her mother. 70s is like my favorite, but uh, none, nonetheless, I love all music as a musician, as mainly a vocalist. Uh, so good morning to all of you musician friends of mine who are out there. Um, God loves you, I love you, and all of my, the rest of my friends who aren't musicians, Cammie's a dancer, She's a beautiful dancer, and she's here with us this morning. Uh, is the Lord putting a new song on your heart? Is he putting a new song in your heart? Are you thinking about a new song? Are you a songwriter? Is he putting a new song in your heart? Think on that and, and dwell on that for a minute while we go over to, let me see where we're going, Psalm, Proverb. I'm sorry. Let's go to Proverbs 3. Uh, that's where we're going to read from next. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on a tablet Ooh, of your heart. That's kind of fun. I was just saying, did God put a new song in your heart? Cool, man. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. I've been mentioning that Proverbs sixteen three for quite a few days. Commit your works to the Lord, and he and your plans will be established. Yeah, that's another uh, translation, but uh, 
Oh, is he faithful? Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. We need strengthening this morning, don't we? Amen? <laughs> Can I get an amen? We need strength this morning, and we are weak, but he is strong, and he will he will build you up this morning with the water of his word. Let's just continue to read. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. That reminds me of Malachi. Turn to Malachi for a minute. Let me tell you something about, about uh, tithes and offerings just for a sec. I didn't expect this. <laughs> Let's go over the end of the, the Old Testament uh, to Malachi. There's Micah. Zephaniah. Okay. Let's go to Malachi. I don't have it marked. I don't have a, I don't have a Bible that, uh, that's marked. I, um, I just kind of to find them out, okay? That's the last book there in the Old Testament, okay? If you want to know how to quickly get there in your Bible. But go to Malachi 3.10. 3.10. I love this verse. This is, this is good. This is good. Good God. Okay, where is it? Bring all the ties into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this. Try me, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing and that uh, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Guys, this is the only time, the only place you can actually test God. He says, he says, and try me now in this. Try me now in this. Right? If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Guys, guys, I lived my life for many years. I've returned to it, uh, to tithing in the church. And uh, I will tell you that blessings flow exactly like he says. We don't do, we don't do it we don't do it for that, okay? We, we, of course, don't do it. We don't, we don't give our tithe and, and our 10% of our income, and we don't do that and expect, you know, just expect. But, um, but we do. We, we do come in expectation, and we, we are able to <laughs> actually test God in it. Test him. He says, try me in this, that I will not bless you with overflowing I had so many blessings. I have so many blessings in my life. Relationship blessings. I have financial blessings. I have favor. Where I go, God follows me. And it, it's, um, I believe it's one of the keys to the kingdom. And when you grab a hold of it, the concept of, of giving your first fruits, which it's talking about here in three Let's go back to Proverb 3. It says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. We went over to Malachi 3.10 and talked about how you can try. He says, try me in this. Try me in this. You can test God. That's the only place you can test God. The only place. He wants you to test him in that. Good morning, Chuck. It's good to have you here this morning. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Ooh, just as the father, a father, the son in whom he delights. Ooh, ooh. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. He loves you. God loves you. He loves you. And it's no coincidence that you're here this morning and you're hearing this message at this very moment. He loves you so much. His Holy Spirit, yes, it brings conviction. It does. It, he gently convicts us of things that we are, we are uh, engaging in 
things that keep us away from his love, away from his goodness, away from, away from his blessings. Yeah, we say yay to you this morning. You are a good God. You are a faithful father to chasten us, Lord, to, um, to convict us by the power of your Holy Spirit. We want more of you. We want you to remind us of the things that are keeping us away from you. That's how we're going to get closer to you. We know that. We, we realize that, God, and, and we invite you to, to um, give us a check in our spirit. If there's stuff going on that we need to, to remove from our life, right? Hmm. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. Referring to happy is the man who finds wisdom. Referring to wisdom as a, as a, as a female, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire may, uh, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Mm, that reminds me of that worship song. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your worship songs. Uh, your worship songs are written with scripture and that is a good way for the Lord to minister to you by the power of his word is by listening to worship music because many of them uh, talk about his word um, yeah length of days is in her right hand in her left hand riches and honor her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Reminds me of Psalm 1, the tree planted beside the river whose leaves never wither, but the tree is constantly drinking from the river of life, and, and fruitful, so fruitful. We want to be fruitful like that tree planted in the river, right? The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, by understanding he established the heavens, by his knowledge the depths were broken up, and clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes, keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. Are you hearing this, guys? You know the word of God, you know it, and you know it well. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid by the terror of night, guys. There's terror coming in the night, and you will not be afraid. The Lord says, fear not, for I am with you. Over and over again in Joshua, one of my favorite books. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. Yes, you will lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. Guys, I pray sweet prophetic dreams at night and sweet prophetic daydreams during the day for all the listeners each day. Do not be afraid of sudden terror. Do not be afraid of it, nor the trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go, go, come back and tomorrow I will give it. When you have it with you, do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause, if he has done you no harm. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways, for the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel is with the upright. Guys, his secret counsel the Holy Spirit is, is counseling us as we're reading his word. And I'm washing you in the water of the word. His secret counsel by the power of his Holy Spirit is giving us revelation and wisdom and knowledge, guys. 
We ask for that, Lord. We ask for your wisdom and your knowledge and your revelation, new revelation for each one of us in your word. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but the shame shall be the legacy of fools. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the name above all names. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You can call on him. You can make him your personal savior and have a personal relationship with him. He died on the cross for the atonement of all of our sins. And amen, he died on the cross to overcome evil. Guys, we're in a spiritual battle. This is a battle between good and evil. Charlotte, good morning. It's good to have you here. Charlotte and Sandy, if I didn't give you a warm welcome yet. We're in a spiritual battle, and this is a battle between good and evil. Okay? God's the good guy. He is. He has overcome. He has been victorious over Satan and uh, trampled over him. And amen. Hey, if this is a spiritual battle, guys, uh, and God is the good guy and Satan is the bad guy, who are you lining yourself with today? Who's side are you on what team if you have to choose it and you you pretty much do <laughs> okay you're gonna speak life or death uh, I choose the good side I choose to be aligned with God today and you can make that choice so Heavenly Father I pray for salvation yeah I pray for salvation for, for that, that person that you're talking to this morning that needs to know you greater, that is feeling the unctioning from the power of your Holy Spirit to know you greater, yeah, to have a personal relationship with you. Yeah, keep working in that person's life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus, 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 call in his mighty name. We're going to go back uh, to the New Testament, uh, a very short book. It is not the shortest book in the Bible. I believe Obadiah is the shortest book in the Bible, but Jude is short. <laughs> Amen. Um, I don't even know how I know that. I hope I said that right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Obadiah is the shortest book in the Bible. I know that because I taught Bible school. I... Uh, when you teach Bible school to young children, you, you learn a lot. So, mm, yeah. If you want to become childlike and, and learn uh, learn that way and you're a visual person, go to YouTube. I mentioned that earlier in the message today. Go over to YouTube and, and watch some of the animated Bible stories. Uh, that's a great way to get familiar with God's Word and about the people, people in the Bible. And I mentioned the other day that God is a God of miracles. Amen. And he is still working like that today. Today. Yes, he is still working like that today. He's performing miracles across the world. Guys, people are being raised from the dead. If you don't believe, go check out Dean Braxton. Dean Braxton. D-E-A-N-B-R-A-X-T-O-N. Check out his story. Okay? There is no scientific reason for him coming back to life after being dead for I want to say a minute 45 it's of something like that and his wife uh, and he tell the story they go around the world ministering to people and telling the story about how he was literally raised from the dead God is a God of miracles he partners and every time in the Bible he he partnered with um, a person to perform miracles and and so God is not dead he is alive amen he is, a, he is alive. God is not dead. I believe that's a movie. I believe that's a movie. My back. Okay. Uh, let's go to Jude. We're reading from Jude. It is the second to the last book in the Bible. It's just before Revelation. I have a feeling we're going to start in Revelation on Monday. <laughs> that is a good place to be as um, 
we find ourselves in these troubled times and okay let's uh let's say um jude was a brother to jesus and he's writing to the general christian audience he's just writing to christians okay across the board to those who are let's say jude a bond servant of jesus christ and a brother of james to those who are called sanctified by god the father and preserved in jesus christ mercy peace and love be multiplied to you ah uh, beloved while i was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for his condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, thank you, Steve, for that. The Bible Project on YouTube is really good for animated films, uh, Bible stories, guys, to learn about uh, the stories in the Bible and the characters in the Bible. Real, real life people in the Bible. Um, great way to learn God's Word. I recommend that this weekend. Play those videos. Do you have grandchildren or children still in the house? Um, there you go. <laughs> if you don't... If you don't have kids in the house, listen to them anyway. It's a great way to uh, to learn. Yes, animated Bible stories and books. And books. That's good, Steve. Thank you for sharing that. That I couldn't remember. I mentioned that early, and I couldn't remember the name. Okay. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah, ah, salty, and the cities around them in a similar manner to these have given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Where have we, where have we heard this lately, recently? Gerald Purify. Oh, another drummer boy. I've got two drummer boys in the room. Steve Hillstein and Gerald Purify are here. Amen. Hey, you guys, did you know I play percussion? <laughs> I bet, I bet you didn't know that, Gerald, and I bet, Steve, you did not know that. I'm not an expert, you know, I just kind of, I dabble in it. I've got a, a basket, right? I've got a basket full of different instruments that I kind of kind of play around with. Okay. I keep a good beat, though. I've got good rhythm. <laughs> All right. These are spots in your love feasts while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. <laughs> yeah. Now e Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all, who are ungodly among them all of their ungodly deeds which they have committed in ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking around their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, you, beloved, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are the sensual persons who, is, who cause division, not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit. See, it's biblical. Praying in the Holy Spirit. That is... That is praying in your own special prayer language, guys. Um, 
Soon I'm gonna start Saturday a Saturday session, maybe at least twice a month. We're gonna go over to another platform and take things to the next level corporately, amen? Where we will pray in the Holy Spirit and where you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and receive your prayer language. If you do not have one, I'd be happy to pray of you. I've done that. Uh, my friend Cody, who is a Canadian and lives in Israel, he took a, a Jewish woman for his wife and they've got, they're building a family there. I remember those times, Cody, good times, uh, praying over those who wanted to receive the Holy Spirit and have their own prayer language. Uh, let's see keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and on the same have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Let's read that one more time. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. God, you are a good God. You can keep us. You can keep us from stumbling. Mm. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy, exceeding joy, to God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Michael Rosen is with us this morning. Good to have you here, Michael. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. The Lord is really ministering to me. I was in a room uh, in a room uh, during an um, intercessory prayer, prayer, and I have oh, these lovely women in our church that I pray with, and um, I was in the room with them, and uh, the Lord put on my heart a song that I wrote, um, a song that I wrote in, I think it was 1999, yeah, and uh, so he had me sing the song uh, over over the, the prayer time, and uh, you know, when, when, uh, when in God's word, we're addressed as beloved, beloved, that's God's heart toward you, each and every one of you, each and every one of you, beloved, my beloved, my beloved, yeah, I feel a song stirring in my heart, mm. Thank you, Lord. My friend Steve has been inspiring me to sing a song at the end of the message, and we're nearing the end of the message, and the Lord's stirring me up with a song I wrote about two, uh, when was that? I, I think it was 1999, I think so, 2000. Yeah, it's called The Wedding Song, and it's out of the Song of Solomon. How beautiful you are, my darling. How beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. You have made my heart beat faster. My sister, my bride, you have made my heart beat faster with a single glance from your eyes. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. That is a healing song. That is a healing song. God has used that song to bring healing over his people. Yeah, every time I sing that song, there's a healing that takes place. What is, what is it in your body you need healing for today? How beautiful you are, my darling, how beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. You have made my heart beat faster. My sister, my bride, you have made my heart beat faster with a single glance of your eye. I am my beloved's and his desire is for me. I am my beloved's and his desire is for me. 
Think on that today. Think on, think on that. That's a love story between God, Jesus, Christ, and the church. His beloved. You are his beloved. And that's a love song from you to God, to Jesus Christ. Right? I am my beloved's and his desire is for me. I am my beloved's. I belong to God. I am a son, his son. I am his daughter. He wants you to be his son. He wants you to be his daughter. Yeah, guys. He wants that. He desires and he created you and designed you, each and every one of you, for relationship with him. And by the way, relationship with others. And isn't this a hard time? We're being shut down again. Stay connected to your friends and your family. I would enc I encourage you to, to see your family. That's what I encourage you. See your family. Stay close to them. Love on them. Love on your family and uh, love on God. He loves you. Can you hear the birds singing in the background? There's a bird sanctuary out there. God is the creator of heavens and earth. If you remember nothing from this message, remember, I am my beloved's and his desires for me. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. How beautiful you are, my darling. Beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. You have made my heart beat faster. My sister, my bride, you have made my heart beat faster. With a single glance from your eyes, I am my beloved's and his desires for me. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. How beautiful you are, my darling. Beautiful you are. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. You have made my heart beat faster. My sister, my bride, you have made my heart beat faster. With a single glance from your eyes, I am my beloved's and his desires for me. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. I am my beloved's and his desires for me. Yeah, that's a healing song, guys. A song God gifted me in 1999. And it's a healing song. I've seen people healed of emotional wounds, of physical wounds, as I sang that song. And God knows that I, I walked away from him for a time and denied him access. And I'm here to tell you I'm one of you. I'm not a Bible scholar. I am just a simple girl. I love Jesus with all my heart. I'm bringing you the word. I'm bringing you the word every day. I'm, I'm showing you, I'm modeling for you how to pray to God, which is having relationship with him, how to praise him, right? Big out the, bring out the big guns, guys. How to declare God's promises over your life and the lives of your family members. And how to read his word. How to read his word and how to ask him for revelation in it. Fred Kropp is a pastor in our county and Fred Kropp is in the room. Welcome, Fred. It's good to have you here this morning. Gosh, 
Fred would know, I'm no Bible scholar <laughs> or theologian, but you know what? I have a heart for God and I have a heart for the people. I have a heart for all the people. And uh, yeah, yay, I say yay to God. He, he's a good God, he's a good daddy. I know him intimately like that and he desires relationship with you. Guys, it's the end of the message. Happy Friday. I'm gonna be coming back to you on Monday with another great message. Um, basically just praying with you, declaring God's promises and reading his word. Lord, what do you have for us this weekend? You guys, stay focused on the one thing that went well, okay, at the end of your day. There's a lot of bad news out there, but God has good news for you. Don't forget to pick up the Bible, then you can follow along more easily on Monday. Have a great weekend. God bless you. He loves you, and I love you.